cheap, no fires, stable, home storage made in USA. Oh my gosh. Looks like Google's listening to my dreams now too. <laughs> Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about a battery technology that has been used by NASA for decades. It powers the Mars Rover International Space Station, the Hubble Telescope and numerous satellites. This battery is well tested, can literally operate in extreme temperatures of outer space, does not suffer from thermal runaway even if completely penetrated, still remains at 86% of its original capacity after, listen to this. 30,000 cycles. They scale very easily and are almost 100% recyclable. It literally sounds like a dream. So if this battery is so amazing, why have we not seen it widely used here on planet Earth? If you will find this video interesting, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and give this video a very big like. I really appreciate that. Now back to the battery or maybe its biggest problem. So as always, it comes down to one thing. More on that in a minute because it does look like there may be a solution to it as well. Let's first talk about the basics of the battery itself. So it looks like a long scuba tank contains nickel cathode and a platinum or palladium hydrogen anode. When the battery is charging, the catalytic reaction generates hydrogen gas. During discharge, the hydrogen oxidizes and converts back to water. It is a pressured container up to 1,500 PSI. As a reference, your car tires are usually around 30 to 35 PSI. Now, NASA conducted a test in 2017, and even at this high PSI, there was no explosion or catastrophic failure with the hypervelocity impact which is one of the biggest concerns really when it comes to any battery for your electric car or for your home storage for it not to basically explode. Now, as I said earlier, it can easily operate in extreme temperatures like the desert or frigid mountaintop, and it does not require an external heating or cooling. I mean, it literally sits in the outer space right now and it's fine. So this makes for simpler designs for the buildings or the housing that will actually house these battery banks. Another huge bonus is the type of the battery does not suffer from dendrites formation. Dendrites are small crystal formations that grow over time in lithium ion batteries. Eventually these dendrites cause capacity reduction and eventually short circuits so basically battery failure. The lack of dendrite formation is what gives this exceptionally high life cycles and 86% remaining capacity after decades of use. With no moving parts, simple chemical reactions and abundance of raw materials, it is really easy to produce. Or so we would hope. They also have a decent power density of 140 watt hours per kilogram. Lithium does have a higher density of 260, even 400 watt hours per kilogram, but since these are made for stationary use, power density is not really as critical of a concern. Now, these won't be used in electric vehicles or laptops. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room, that is the price. So the price has been the main reason why these amazing batteries are not yet in use on Earth or mass use. Obviously with NASA, money is not that big of a concern and with so many outstanding advantages, those batteries were initially developed in 1970s. I mean, doing research for this video, I came across an overview of nickel hydrogen batteries and different types by NASA from literally 1995, the year I was born. So it was never an issue with the technology. We know a lot about these batteries and how they work. The biggest problem or the price problem has always been platinum. Now let's get into Enervenue, a California based company that will have a manufacturing plant open in Kentucky, supposedly in 2024. So if we look at their website, the chairman and chief technology advisor is none other than Dr. G. Chu. 
I hope I'm saying it correctly. I, I apologize in advance. So Dr. Chu has published hundreds of research papers and was ranked number one in material science by the world's most influential scientific minds publications. He has a PhD from Harvard and is currently a professor of material science at Stanford. In 2018, he and his colleagues at Stanford University published a paper where they replaced the platinum catalyst of a nickel hydrogen battery with a much cheaper nickel molybdenum cobalt catalyst. I hope I'm not butchering these words. I promise I'm trying. They claim in their first 2018 paper that this brings the price of a nickel hydrogen battery down to about $83 per kilowatt hour, or about 100 today with inflation. So in December of 2023, lithium ion batteries were down to about $140 per kilowatt hour, according to Bloomberg NEF. It is normal to be skeptical of such claims of future product pricing being 30% cheaper than the best thing currently available, especially since the battery is not on the market yet at all. However, Intervenue successfully completed a commercial test of their battery back in 2022. They also have over 800 megawatt hours of committed purchase orders. This combined with the credentials of Dr. Chu have me feeling a little bit more confident that this is not just another breakthrough or game changer I have seen over the past few years. Now, there's still some things to deal with as far as the cost goes, but the main parts of the battery, hydrogen and nickel, are both very plentiful, especially hydrogen. Now, it is the most abundant in the universe. There was a crazy period in early 2022 when nickel skyrocketed to over $100,000 per metric ton for literally a day. But overall, you can see that nickel prices have been on a steady downward trend and the future markets also show little price changes. While hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe and it accounts for literally 62% of all the atoms in the human body, it does have one problem. And that is usually bounds to other elements. It's not a loner, it's always with somebody else. It requires a lot of energy to separate it from like, for example, seawater. Right now, the cheapest hydrogen is gray hydrogen, comes from fossil fuels, but this is also the dirtiest and most polluting form of hydrogen. If we want to be truly green, then these batteries would need to use green hydrogen. Green hydrogen is made via water electrolysis using renewable energy. Now, gray hydrogen currently costs about $1 to $3 per kilogram, while green hydrogen currently costs 5 all the way up to $12 per kilogram, which is a huge difference when we talk high volumes. It takes about 50 kilowatt hours of electricity to make one kilogram of hydrogen through water electrolysis. Now, there is a middle ground here, and that's called blue hydrogen. Blue hydrogen is still made from fossil fuels, but at least it uses carbon capture technology to limit to limit those releases of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Blue hydrogen currently costs a little more than the gray one from two to $5 per kilogram. So while blue hydrogen is a step in the right direction, it is still ultimately based on fossil fuels. So I'm not a big fan of that. Now, according to Bloomberg, they expect green hydrogen to be cheaper than gray hydrogen by 2030, which is only, what, six years away. Of all the storage technologies like flow batteries, salt water batteries, or flywheels, or molten salt, or whatever else you want to call it, I have a better feeling about this one in particular. What about you? What do you think? What did I miss? Let me know down in the comments. Do we hope for this technology to be finally deployed in the big grid scale projects? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Platinum. Platinum. <laughs> platinum or platinum? The Catholic. Catholic. And a platinum has been platinum. Platinum. Platinum.